Hi, this is an, uh, an introduction to Maple and some of the commands that can be used to solve linear programming problems. So, um, I'm going to start by opening Maple. So let me share the screen with Maple. So this is the Maple worksheet. When I, when I opened Maple, I went to new worksheet. And I like to make it bigger, especially for the video. So I click on the plus sign here and again, everything gets a little bigger. Now, if you want to make a comment in Maple, that means write some text, maybe to explain what you are doing or about to do, uh, but it's not a Maple command. So you don't want it processed as if it were a Maple command. You put in this sharp sign, and now you can just write some text. I'll write introduction to Maple. And I press enter. And at the prompt, I can enter commands. So let's just start with simple things like arithmetic. Right? How to do arithmetic. So for addition, you write, for example, three plus eight. And I hit enter. And I get 11. Now, it used to be in Maple, commands had to end with a semicolon. And if I put a semicolon in, I always get the answer. Uh, sometimes you still need a semicolon. I like to put them in all the time, so I don't have to worry whether or not I need it. But most of the time, it's not necessary. So that's addition. And 3 minus 8 is minus 5. That's subtraction. To multiply, you need the time sign. And the time sign is the sort of star asterisk over the eight. So if I do three, shift eight, I get the dot for multiplication, eight. That's 24. And if I want three divided by eight, I use the slash, and it puts the cursor under the three. And then we use the right arrow to move this out. Three divided by eight is three eighths. Now, if I want this number as a decimal, there's several ways to do it. So um, there's a command in Maple, E-V-A-L-F. This is the E-V-A-L stands for evaluate. F stands actually for something called floating point, which was old com computer notation for decimal. So if I do E-V-A-L-F, and then in parentheses, no space, three divided by eight, right arrow, close parenthesis, 0 0.375. Now, I want to emphasize something that this EVALF is a sort of a function and the argument goes in parentheses. If I do EVALF and I leave even one space, three divided by eight, oops, that shouldn't be a dot. This is just leaving a space there. I don't get an answer. Uh, this is a kind of error. This means that you don't, I don't get 0 0.375. That's because in a function, you can't have an extra space between the name of the function and the parenthesis. If I remain those two extra, if I remove those two extra spaces, now I get the answer. I could have extra spaces in here. Right? So a lot of extra spaces inside the parentheses and I still get the answer. But over here, when you have a function, you can't have an extra space. That's a very common mistake and it's important to, to know that. There's another way to um, do this and um, so suppose I have um, I don't know uh, 
629 divided by 36. Actually, make that. Uh, Three hundred and thirty-nine divided by thirty-six. Aha! Uh -huh. That turns out to be seventy-one over four, because both of these numbers are divisible by nine. So, Mabel takes this fraction and reduces it to lowest terms. If I want as a decimal, I can write E V A L F, and I don't have to type in that number again. Inside the parentheses, I could put a percent sign, and the percent sign in Mabel means substitute in whatever you just calculated. So I just calculated 71 over four, and to get that as a decimal, that's 17.75. If I had done it, I mean, I could have done it just like this, of course. Uh, And I get the same answer. This is just to point out that in Maple, you can do things in many ways and, still, and get the right answer. You can do things wrong and get the wrong answers, but there are many ways to do stuff. Um, oh, and how do you take powers? Uh, suppose you want uh, five squared, five, and then you do the carrot, which is above the six, that moves the cursor up. And now I put a two. And let me move the cursor over so it's back where it should be. Five squared is 25. If I wanted, um, let's say, three to the fourth, or well, three cubed, I move the cursor over, plus two to the seventh, 155. So you can do arithmetic. In Maple, these are the commands. Um, what are two very important things you need to know with any computer program? You need to be able to assign a value to a variable and you can make anything a variable. So suppose I have the variable, I want X to be equal to five. So to let X equal five, you don't say X equal five, because uh, then if you just type X, you get X. So this doesn't really do you any good. If you want to assign the value five to X, the symbol to assign a value to a variable is colon followed by equal sign. So if I do X colon equals five, let me just, start that again x cone equals five. Now, if I type x, the computer says five. If I type two times x, the computer gives me 10 because now x is equal to five. And whenever I type x, it's going to be five. <laughs> if I want to erase that from the memory, there's several ways to do it uh, because maybe I want to let x equal seven. So I could erase everything from the memory. There's a command to do that, which is restart. And that basically restarts everything. So now if I type in X, it still is X, it's not fine. So this assignment operator is very important. Restart is also very important, especially if you're doing several problems and you want to like start each problem fresh, just do restart and then it erases everything from the memory and you're in pretty good shape. Now, there are two basic operations that are very easy to do in Maple and very important in linear programming and everywhere else in mathematics. One is solving equations and the other is plotting the graphs of functions. So there are several commands to solve. The simplest is simply solve. So if you wanna solve an equation in one variable, Let's say you want to solve the equation three times X equals thirty nine. 
So you type three times x equals 39, and we'll, then a comma, and then the variable you're solving for, which is x. And then parenthesis, and you get the answer is 13. That's pretty good. Suppose you want to solve the equation three times x equals 38. It gives you the answer 38 times three. Suppose you want the answer as a decimal. Let me copy and paste. So instead of solve, there's a command called F solve. This means solve the equation and give me the answer as a decimal. It's the same equation and as a decimal, it's 12.666. Six 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 seven. You'll notice there are twelve significant digits here, and in Maple, the default, if you don't change anything when you run the program, is for decimals you always have ten significant digits. We can of course solve much more complicated equations. All right, let's take a quadratic equation. So let's solve the equation um, x squared, oops, minus nine times x plus, um, uh, let's make it this one easy, plus eight, solve for x. And two answers, four and two. If you want to make it more interesting, let's make it x squared minus six x plus seven. Uh huh. Three plus root two, three minus root two. If we wanted them as decimals, I could do E V A O F and then the percent sign. And there they are as decimals. Or I could use the F solve command, which gives me the answers as decimals right away. <laughs> gives them in the opposite order for whatever reason, but still the same. So if you want to make it more complicated, like a cubic. Ooh, very complicated. Huh. Let's change that to F solve. So there's one real solution, and I guess there are two complex solutions. But Maple does it. That's really very impressive. Now, in linear program, mostly we deal with linear equations. Um, and in the beginning, in the problems we're solving now, there are mostly two equations and two unknowns. So how do you solve two equations? So let's, let's, let's take two linear equations. Suppose we have two equations we want to solve, and we can call the variables x and y, or x1 and x2, or uv, or any letters we like. Let me start with xy, because that's probably what you're already very familiar with. So if you're going to have more than one equation, you put them in these curly brackets. So suppose we have two times x plus y equals three, comma, and then another equation, x minus five times y equals one. So those are two linear equations. And now we wanna solve for x and y. So curly brackets, x comma y. So we put the two variables we wanna solve for also in curly brackets parenthesis, semicolon, and those are the answers. Now you remember from high school algebra, two linear equations that corresponds to two straight lines in the plane and the common solution is where they intersect. That's where they intersect. If you want the solutions as decimals, use F solve and you certainly get the answers. And the same applies to, I don't know, three equations and three unknowns. So 
Suppose I have 2xy, 2x plus y minus 7 times z equals 3, x minus 5y minus 2 times z equals 1. And then we make up another equation. I don't know, x plus y plus z equals 10. So those are three linear equations and three variables. And I want to solve for x, y, and z. Ah, there's a unique solution, it seems. That's it. And if I want them as decimals, I can use the percent signs command. There they are as decimals. Now, in, line in linear programming, instead of x and y, we often use x1 and x2 as variables. So let me just make this x1, you see if this works. Uh, and no space, y and x2. And this will be x1 and y will be x2. And I'm solving for x1 comma x2. Then I get the same answer, 16 over 11, 1 over 11. So it's really your choice whether to use x and y or x1 and x2 or any other letters you might prefer. And that really is your choice. So this is how you can solve simultaneous systems of linear equations. You can solve simultaneous systems of higher degree equations or all kinds of equations, but in linear programming, it's almost exclusively for us linear equations. Now, another thing that you do in calculus, pre-calculus, linear, uh, linear programming and so forth, is get the graphs of functions, plot a function. So if you have a function of one variable, uh, there's a simple command to plot it. It's just called plot. So suppose we had the function, you know, it's like y equals two times x um, minus one, but you don't put in the y, it's just two times x minus y. Plot that, if I just write comma x, the default is to plot that from minus 10 to plus 10. There we just plotted that function. If you only want to plot this, for example, for non-negative values of x, you can always give a range of values of x as follows. Instead of just 2x minus 1 comma x, it's x equals, and let's say from 0 to 13. There it is. That's the graph of this function from 0 to 13. If you only wanted this where x and y were both non-negative, you could say, you know, plot this x going from 0 to 13, comma, and just make up whatever numbers you want, y equals 0 going to 7. So here, x goes from 0 to 13, y goes from 0 to 7. But out here, the function's above 7, so you don't see it. It truncates the graph at y equals 7. You let this go out much further. There we go. Uh, you have this whole graph. Now you'll notice this graph isn't drawn to scale because from here to here is 10 horizontally. Vertically, 10 is much smaller. So this is not drawn, this is a correct graph, but with respect to how the axes, the X and Y axes are labeled. If you want to draw into scale where one unit in the X direction equals one unit in the Y direction, you right click on the graph, this menu comes up, you go to scaling constrained and click that. And now this really is drawn to scale. Mm -hmm. Here, one unit like here, like from zero to 10 horizontally, zero to 10 vertically, they're exactly the same on your computer monitor. 
So that's using scaling constraint. If you don't want it, again, right click, see scaling constraint has a check next to it. You undo it just by clicking on it again. If you want to plot several functions on the same graph, for example, here I had these two straight lines. Um, hmm. See, that's not a good example. Um, let me just uh, make it easier. Plot. Suppose I had the lines, and I put that in curly brackets when I have more than one. I say y equals two times x minus one, comma, and maybe another line would be um, minus three times x plus four. So those are two lines that I want to plot, let's say from x going from zero to 10. Uh huh. There they are. The blue line is 2x minus 1. The red line is minus 3x plus 4. I want to find this point of intersection. I could just solve these equations. Um, I could say, um, well, this will just give me the x coordinate. Um, I could say solve y equals 2x minus 1 and y equals minus 3x minus 1. And we want to solve that for the two variables x and y. If I put them in curly brackets. Oops. Oh not plotting, this should be solve. Aha, uh -huh. and the point of intersection, according to this is one comma one. So if I have these two lines, they cross when x equals one and y equals one. You might say that doesn't look like one one, well, but that's because this isn't drawn to scale. So if I right click, click on scaling constraint, uh-huh, this looks more like one comma one. What's another way to see that? Well, let's magnify the graph. So for this graph, there it is. Um, if I wanna see where this point of intersection is, instead of graphing this maybe from zero to 10, let me graph it from zero to two. Uh-huh. And it looks more like one comma one. Let me blow it up some more. Let me graph it from maybe 0 0.9 to 1.1. Uh-huh. One, one, yeah. It's fun to play with this. Suppose I also restrict y to go from 0 0.9 to 1.1. Yeah. It, is true. it looks like the point of intersection of these two lines really is 1, 1. So you can use the plotting function as a kind of a magnifying glass to blow up. part of your graph. Now in linear programming, we usually deal with inequalities. We have a linear programming problem with some constraints and typically the constraints are inequalities, linear inequalities and the X and Y have, and there are, there are non-negativity constraints. X and Y have to be non-negative. So just as it's possible to graph a 
simple functions, there's a way to graph inequalities. Like suppose you want to find all the points where y is less than or equal to 2x plus 1. So there are a lot of different plotting capabilities in Maple. And they're in a certain package called plots. So um, how to open the plots package. So this is a collection of plotting commands. And if we want to use any of them, we have to tell Maple we plan to do more complicated plotting. So the command to open a problem, a package is with, we want to do maple with this group of commands called plots. And I just wrote with plots. And now I have a whole list of commands that I'm able to use. And the two that we'll be using immediately for solving linear programming problems is a plot called inequal. That's for graphing an inequality. And a plot called contour plot. So let's try in equal. So I can't use in equal until I've opened up this plotting package. But say in equal. Um, let's try something. 2x less than or equal to. Over on the left, I have a menu. Uh, sometimes it looks like this when it's not open. One of them is common symbols. If I click on that, I have all sorts of mathematical symbols I can use. One is less than or equal to, which is very convenient. So I put the cursor by the 2x. I click on less than or equal to. And let's say 2x less than or equal to 1. I want to plot that maybe for x going from 0 to 5. Let's see what happens. Oops. I have to have it as a linear inequality, the, the kind that come up in Maple, like in linear program, like maybe 2x plus y is less than or equal to 1. And maybe x goes from 0 to 5, and I want to give a range of y y equals, and then I put a lower bound like zero, two dots, and then the upper bound. Let's try that. Aha, uh -huh, there we go. So for x between zero and five, these are the values, this blue region. Oh, that's very nice. Let's make it a little bit bigger. So these are all the points where x is between 0 and 2, and y is between 0 and 2, and 2x plus y is less than or equal to 1. Um, good. Suppose we had multiple inequalities. So Let me change this, make, let me make this 2x plus y less than or equal to uh, 4. Ooh, that's what it looks like, eh? Um, let me make the y bigger. Yeah. So this is all the points where x is between 0 and 2, and y is between 0 and 6. Even if I made x going from 0 to 3, let's say, okay. this is still, these are the points where that satisfy 2x plus y less than or equal to 4. And suppose I had another inequality. So I'm going to put in curly brackets my two inequalities. So one is 2x plus y less than or equal to 4. Maybe the other is. Um, 3x plus um, 5y less than or equal to 7, curly brackets. Actually, let me, I want to insert a cursor so I can 
insert a line here. Let me click on this. And now, suppose I take just this second inequality and I want to grab that guy. three x plus five y less than or equal to seven. Huh, that's what that looks like. Hmm. So this is the set of points that satisfy one. This is the set of points that satisfy the other. And what is the set of points that satisfy both? That's given by this. Uh -huh. So this is, so if the feasible region for a linear programming problem was determined by these two inequalities and the non-negativity conditions, here I'm putting in the non-negativity conditions just by letting x start at zero and y start at zero. Um, But that's the feasible, that would be the feasible region. Hmm. Now, in many of the elementary linear programming problems that we're starting with, there's an objective function, which is a linear function. And the various values of the objective function correspond to parallel lines in the plane. And if we go back here where I open plots, there's also a command called contour plot. So suppose I had an objective function. Let me just give it a name. Uh, I'll call it objective function. So my objective function is, uh, Let's say it's x plus y. And I want to know what is the maximum value of this objective function in this region. And I want to do it graphically by looking. So normally what we would do, or the way we you saw this being done in the textbook for the beginning problems is you graph x plus y equals one, two, three, various regions just to get some idea of what the different, the graphs of the objective function are for different values of x plus y. So those different lines are called contours. And there's a command called contour plot. And contour plot, oops. What happened here? Um, okay. Uh, hope this is still recording. Let's see, I hope I'm still in Maple. So contour plot, oops. Let's just ignore this. So I'm gonna plot X plus Y, say X going from zero to two and Y going from zero to two. And how many contours do I want? I don't know, maybe five, let's see what happens. Aha, uh -huh, fantastic. So here, these are different, these are five different values of the contours. Contour just means X plus Y equals some fixed number. Um, there they are, huh? If I wanted more contours, I could make it, let's say 10, doesn't matter.
if I want to pick a different color for what these things are, I could say, okay, make the color red. Oh, there they are. I can change the thickness and so forth, but that's okay. So, so the different values of the objective function, for different values of the objective function, you get these lines, parallel lines. And let's say this is a feasible region. So here where I graph these inequalities, let me just give this a name. Feasible region. And and here's my contour plot. Um, let me just call this, give this a name too. Objective. So I have two different Oh, I think I lost the screen share. So let me go back to that. Share screen. Here we are. Okay, so let me just go back a little bit here. Um, I had introduced the plotting package with plots for graphing an inequality. The command is inequal, the inequality, and then a range of X and Y. So here are two different inequalities. And here I plot the two different inequalities together. So I'm looking at all the points that satisfy both inequalities. This I'm calling the feasible region. Uh, let's see. Suppose I have an objective function, which is x plus y. But, and I want to find out what's the maximum value of the objective function in this domain. So the, a contour plot of the objective function looks like this. So if x plus y has the value, uh, suppose I do eight contours, that'll be very easier, eight. So, hmm, well, maybe not. Um, so these are different values of the objective function where the value x plus y equals z, for any value z, that's the y-intercept. Suppose I want to overlay this feasible region with this contour plot of the objective function. So for that, there is the following interesting display. So this is one more command to learn the maple display. And this display the feasible region plot, right? comma, the objective plot, see, I probably need to put these in curly brackets. Let's just double check. Oh, no, that was fine. OK. so. Here, the blue is the feasible region. These red are contour lines. And the question is, where in the feasible region do you maximize the value of x plus y, the objective function? So if you look at all of these lines, it looks like the one where the maximum value of x plus y will occur is where exactly the line that goes through this corner point of the feasible region. So what are the coordinates of that corner point? That corner point, that's where these two lines that define the blue region intersect. Right? Remember, here is the blue region. 2x plus y less than or equal to 4. 3x plus 5y less than or equal to 0. This is the point of intersection. 
what are the coordinates of that point? So let me use Maple to calculate that. Suppose I want to solve the equations 2x plus y equals 4. That's the line. And 3x plus 5y equals 7, comma, and then in curly brackets, the two variables, x and y, parenthesis, semicolon. Uh, so I didn't want to solve that. Give me just restart. Let me do this again. Oh, this should be a comma and not a period. That's the problem. Maple is not tolerant of errors. Uh huh. So this point is 13 over 7, 2 over 7. And what is the value of x plus y for those two values? I could just add them, or I could simply do the following. There's a command to substitute. Substitute, S-U-B-S is the command to substitute. We're going to substitute x equals 13 over 7, shift, comma, y equals 2 over 7. into the objective function, which was x plus y. And the answer is 15 over 7. So if there were, for example, the objective function were telling you how much profit you could make, the maximum profit, the maximum value of the objective function, x plus y, if x and y are non-negative numbers that satisfy these two inequalities, it would be 15 over 7. All right, so these are commands that are very useful to solve some of the problems in chapter three. And I'm going to stop this talk right now, but then I'll post uh, tomorrow another talk where I actually solve some of the homework problems using Maple. So stop the share and end the talk. <laughs>